So as a collector, of course, that I'm always looking for the original stuff. I'm always looking for original games. I'm always looking for original systems. But that doesn't mean that I don't have my guilty pleasures, that uh, in the end, there's really not a wrong or right way to collect. And definitely my biggest guilty pleasures are compilation cards. So today we're going to take a closer look at a very interesting multi-card that I have in my collection. And greetings, YouTube gamers. Welcome to another episode of Retro Raider. My name is Johnny Retro and welcome to the channel. If you're new on the channel, guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a thing. So about this multi Card. Well, this is a multi card for the Atari 2600 and it is called the 64 in 1 game cartridge. So I got this, you know, a couple of years ago, pretty much when I started collecting for the 2600. I bought this at a local gaming store here in Lisbon, 1UP Gaming Lounge, and I think that it cost me around 7 euros. And uh, that's actually funny because the original games that they had at the store for the 2600 were cheaper than this. Because, of course, guys, this is not official, this is pretty much a bootleg. But it truly is a very interesting one indeed because. In this cartridge, you have switches, and uh, you kind of have to program the cartridge itself to read the games. But I'm not going to spoil anything, so we are going to do an unboxing of the cartridge, and then we're going to see it in action. So let's take a closer look right after this. And here we are back again, guys. So first of all, let's take a look at the box. And uh, as you guys can see, my copy is not in a terrific shape. But I mean, I got a very nice deal on this. And uh, I'm not planning to sell it. I mean, this is part of my collection. So over here, we have 64-in-1 game cartridge. And we have some artwork of the some of the included games on this compilation card. And uh, on the back, it is pretty much the the same thing so i'm going to take the cartridge out and also the instruction manual because in this specific card guys it is very very important that you have the instruction manual and here we have it so first let's take a look at the actual card we have some artwork right here and uh, this label guys it feels it feels cheap <laughs> it is a very cheap label uh, no information right here on the end lab on the end label, which is you know it is a shame. And uh, this is a heavy card. This this feels heavy, definitely heavier than your standard Atari Twenty Six Hundred cartridge. And that has to do probably with the motherboard inside. But uh, I never opened it. I I never opened this uh, this cartridge. And uh, the very a very peculiar thing that you guys probably already noticed is that you have switches. On the actual card and it's through the switches or the the position of the switches that you guys are going to have access to the games that is why it is crucial it is essential to have the instruction manual in order to play this card because if you only have this guys i mean you're going to have a very hard time trying to play a couple of these games so uh let's take a look at the at the instruction manual and here as you guys can see you have information about the games, you have all of the names of the games included with the compilation card, and you also have these uh, type of codes in here. And these right here are pretty much inputs. So this is the position, these are the positions that you guys need to put on the, the switches of the card in order to get access to the game. So for example, let's say that you guys want to play Space Ward, right? You need to put all of the switches on the card to the right, as it says right here. So, you go to the cart, just put everything to the right, okay? Now, another example. Let's say that you guys want to play, let's see what we have right here. You want to play catch time, right? You need to go to the switches. So, this the top one would be to the right, okay? The bottom ones, the bottom ones in the right would be to the left. <laughs> then the top ones in the right is to the right, the three of them, right? So in this position, you get access to catch time, right? And then it is pretty much the same thing to the rest of the games. And uh, just uh, an important thing, guys. This is not misleading, okay? It says 64 in one. You actually have 64 games 
in this because usually when you guys find you know compilation cards uh not just for the atari i mean for the game boy nes etc usually you'll find you you guys are going to find ones that says you know 101 or 264 in one but then in the end it's you know it is really just copies inside of copies <laughs> and uh, you really don't get you actually don't get 200 games or 100 games but uh, in here you actually have 64 different games within one card so just another thing about this guys about the the list of games well i'm not an expert when it comes to the atari 2600 i like the system but you know i didn't grow up with it and uh i'm just curious about the about the platform but i don't know most of these games you know i have a lot of atari 2600 cartridges i play a lot of 2600 games but i really don't know most of these for example, I don't know, Time Race, Laser Blasts, and here we have Ice Hockey, okay, I know Ice Hockey, uh, Donkey Kong, of course, but, you know, no Space Invaders, or, you know, Yars Revenge, or Demon Attack, or Pitfall, or Berserk, uh, Mrs. Pac-Man, <laughs> we don't have any of those. And, uh, you know, just let me know on the comment section below, guys. If you know any of these games, if you guys own any of these games, I mean, are these obscure games? Are these early releases on the 2600? I don't know, just just let me know. Because I think that this is a very interesting choice for... Um, very interesting choice for <laughs> compilation cards. Interesting choice of games, indeed. So I just want to say one more thing before I show you this card in action. Uh, I did some research for this video. And of course that, you know, most of these, you know, most of these completion cards that you guys are going to find out there in the wild at, uh, at gaming stores are bootlegs, right? These usually are mass-produced bootleg cartridges. You know, Taiwan, China, it is what it is. But I read online that you actually have a couple of these that are homebrew made. So you have homebrew compilation cartridges, and uh, that is really the type of stuff that I like to collect. Uh, I never heard about those, I've never seen one, but uh, let me know down below if, um, if you guys have any of those, if you ever heard any of those homebrew compilation cartridges. So uh, yeah, that would be very interesting to know about those. And uh, So yeah, let's take a closer look at the 64-in-1 game cartridge running on the original hardware. Okay, so currently for convenience, I have my Atari 2600 hooked up to my portable JVC television, okay? So the image is not going to be great, guys, so, uh, you know, bear with me. <laughs> okay, so let's grab our instruction manual and uh, our cartridge. Uh, let's play some games. I would say let's play some classic Donkey Kong. Okay, so here we have, I hope that you guys can see, here we have the inputs that we need to put on the switches of the cartridge and uh, after we get the right input we should have Donkey Kong playing on the Atari 2600 okay so the first switch is to the left done the second switch is to the right okay then the third switch is also to the left okay done then, on the right side of the cartridge, the right switches, we need to put right, right, left. Okay, so right, right, and left. Okay, now, just going to put the cartridge in. It's in. I'm going to turn on the system, turn on the television, and I might have to do some tuning here. Wait for it. Okay. And, uh, and here we have it. We have Donkey Kong. Now, does it work? Just let me give you guys a little bit of a close-up. Okay. And I know that it sucks, guys, to, you know, to shoot straight into the television, but, uh, you know, just bear with me. Let's see if it plays all right. And it does. It is playing. It's Donkey Kong. And uh, it is just not, you know, 
a cheap version of Donkey Kong. It is really Donkey Kong on the 2600. Plays great, and I just lost. Okay, I just put the input to another game. I put the input to UFO Patrol, as you guys can see. Let's see if it works. And it does. Now, I really don't know what I'm doing because I've never played this game before. But so far, it seems like sort of a Frogger game. <laughs> and I just lost again. Okay, before I wrap up the video, guys, I still want to show you one last thing because I just found about this. I give it a try and uh, I think that you guys are going to enjoy this. Okay, just check this out, guys. Uh, we're currently at my living room. That's why the sound just sucks. <laughs> and uh, this multi-card actually works on the Retron 77. I mean, just check this out. It's awesome. Really, really cool. And uh, you know, I just gave this a try, you know, before I shoot the video, and uh, it works. It actually works on the Retron 77, and I'm very happy about that. And there you go, guys. This was the 64-in-1 game cartridge for the Atari 2600. And please let me know on the comment section below, guys, if you knew about this multi-card for the 2600. Also, let me know what you guys think about multi-cards in general. Let me know on the comment section below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to put a like on this video. Please subscribe to the channel and take care of yourselves. Take care of the gaming community and game a lot.